Georgia Ron believes that uh, the last two Florida State hirings have been mm -hmm. bad hires. So obviously that's not Jimbo Fisher. That's Taggart and Norvell. Oh. And uh, he's just kind of tired of the state of the program right now. And, and and that's Georgia Ron. And there's that's the problem with a lot of the fan base right now is, is obviously not wanting to blame Jimbo for, for leaving it a dumpster fire. Yes, Willie Taggart was not the right coach for the job. Yes, Mike Norvell so far, things could turn around, but right now has not shown that he is the coach for the job. Jimbo won the national title. And then after that, there is a slow downhill slide and the 2017 Seminoles were a dumpster fire. He left that team with a losing record. He was five and six when he left that team. I'm not hating on him because he was a he was a very good coach, but the facts are that he left the team at five and six, and Odell Hagens had to save his, save the, the winning record, the record streak. That's just facts. Odell Hagens should have been the head coach. No. Permanently? No, I'm just kidding. No, Odell Hagens should not have been the head coach. I love Odell, but no, he should not have been the head coach. Now, of course, we went through this show was in progress. We went through the transition from Willie Taggart and then Mike Norvell being hired. I, I don't recall. I, I know that Bob Stoops was thrown out there as one right. potential hire. You know, was there a viable candidate, a reasonable candidate that you really believe that this program should have pursued? I never believed for a second that it was going to be Bob Stoops. I know there was a slight moment where I think the name Urban Meyer was floated around. There was never a chance Urban Meyer was going to come in. Florida State in, in 2019, after they fired Willie Taggart after 21 games, was a lot in the same position that Miami is with Manny Diaz. Now, Manny Diaz has saved his job. He, he's done a three-game winning streak like we've talked about. They're still in the coastal discussion. He's going to stick around for next season. That's fine. And barring a major letdown where they lose these final three games to us, Duke, and Virginia Tech, Barring that, many Diaz will be around next season. Miami doesn't have the money to go out and and find someone. They don't have the money to pay a big-name coach. They got Manny to come back from Temple on the hometown discount because he's a Miami native, Florida State graduate, by the way. Just remember that, Miami fans. He came back on the hometown discount as a defensive coordinator. He was a defensive coordinator for that team, came back, took a little bit less money than, than they probably were going to offer or would have had to offer to get a bigger name coach. Florida State was in that same boat. If you're going to fire Willie Taggart after 21 games, then this is where you're at. Yes, and, and this is something right here. Thank you very much for that one. It is the first game without Bowden or Schnellenberger, both of them passing away in within the last eight months. So that, that's going to be a big one. And, and, and Coach Diaz has talked about that in the past, what Coach Bowden meant to him. There's been plenty of talk about what Coach Schnellenberger meant for the Miami program. Um, I hope I hope Florida State does something to honor both of them before the game. I, that would be a very good gesture to both programs because without both of those coaches, neither program is anything what they were. Santhush, thank you so much uh, you. for that reminder. And that's a tremendous note, as Jason just outlined. Yes, Howard Schnellenberger, of course, came to Miami when it was nothing. Bobby Bowden did the same thing, obviously. Uh, Bobby stuck around and built his entire legacy there at Florida State and national championship contention year after year after year for 15 consecutive years. And the, the whole deal where Schnellenberger obviously opted to, to move his career on and take that USFL job. But what he forged, what he founded, obviously has lasted and propelled that program that was on the brink of disaster distinction. Uh, the, Extinction. The, the, yes. mighty, the mighty Lou Saban, who, who nearly brought down that Miami <laughs> program. Shout out to Lou Saban <laughs> for that one. So we appreciate everybody being here. Once again, it's Florida State, Miami, Miami, Florida State week, rivalry week here at the Voice of College Football. So we've combined the shows. We're on here for two straight hours. We got Jason here. We're waiting. Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day. Logan, where are you? And uh, later, Cam Underwood, State of the U. Logan, Logan, I think, is a little bit afraid. I'm going to call you out, Logan. If you're listening, you're going to calm down. See, Alex, thank you for your money. But see, this is, this is a dumb Miami fans right here. This is a typical Miami fan who you can tell has never stepped foot on the campus of the University of Miami. 
Yes, Miami's going to win the game. You're not going to win 63. You don't That's know awesome. that. I know that 100%. You don't know that. If your picture is the turnover chain, you have not stepped foot on the University of Miami campus. You don't know that. They don't play on the campus, so I guarantee you, he's not stepped foot on the campus. I've stepped foot on that campus more than most of these Miami fans here. So. I don't have anything to back this up, but... I think based on interaction with the Miami fans and all college football fans, and then just perceiving what we perceive as being in, uh, you know, Jason and I in the sports industry for our entire careers, that the Miami fan base is more national than most fan bases. The Miami, you know, there was, there was a certain draw to Miami football at various times between the early eighties and the early two thousands that drew a lot of people that didn't have a football team or just gravitated to the mm -hmm. swag and everything uh, that Miami brought. It was it was in the eighties and the in the early nineties when they had that that dominant era. It was the sexy team. It was the sexy team with the swag. It was the sexy team to to come out and play for. Yes, Pittsburgh won on Monday night. For those of you who couldn't pay attention, that's why he's wearing a shirt because the Steelers finally won a game. It was a little snug though. It was a little snug. Though. They love to do that. Anyway. They love to make it interesting for the ratings. But, but, but both both Miami at that time was that swag team, 100%. But it's also a fact of most of their fans. It's a school that is a very expensive school. There's a reason I, I, I accepted there. There's a reason I didn't go because it was about five times as much as Florida State, just being honest with you. And it their fans, it's a city thing. It's you root for the Miami Hurricanes because you're from the city of Miami, unless you have ties to somewhere else. My parents went to Florida State. I grew up a Florida State fan. Most fan, most of their fans are like, I grew up going to go to Florida State. It was, I'm a Florida State fan. I'm also going to go to Florida State. A lot of Gator fans are, I'm a Gator fan. I'm going to go to the University of Florida. A lot of Miami fans are, I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. I can't afford the University of Miami, so I'm going to have to go somewhere else. That's not a knock. That's just a fact. Miami's nearly $60,000 to go to school now. Unless you've got $60,000 a year to pay for the University of Miami, you're going to end up at FIU or FSU or UF. So 